And I just came downstairs to finish some work in the basement. This is uh, the rabbit cage when the police depicted it in the uh, photos. Um, they kind of filmed it from up above, high up in a very dark space. And there was, you know, there was like pretty much like bunny crap underneath here. And this grate, as you can see, is black. So what I've done is I've kind of put, you know, a lighter thing on here to show you that, you know, when it's filmed in a dark environment, you know, and there's all black underneath it. Basically, the police were saying that my rabbits were sitting, sitting in crap all day. And this is what separates them, this grate right here is what separates them from the crap and, you know, the cage bottom where the crap is and where the bunny sits. So that was one thing that was much different, you know, in the police depictions of the cage. It's kind of from above and it's a very dark space. Like the camera isn't that great, as good as this one here. And you can't even see the other grate there. You can't even see that. So it looks like the bunny is basically standing on all, you know, crap when he's, when she wasn't. So here we go. The reasons that I think contributed to um, why the police were saying that there was no food in the house for the I mean, they said there was no food for the cats, no food for the guinea pigs, no food for the rabbits. Well, I think the main reason was because it's because of how I stored things. Guinea pig pellets here. Rabbit pellets here. It had a lid on it. And it had a fan on top of it, it was summer. That week in August 2019 was one of the hottest days, a fairly short summer season that year. It was a long, cold winter after that. They were claiming that they were overheated and I'm sure they were, I'm sure they were by the time they, uh, chase them around for a couple of hours. They wouldn't let me put the water on the floor. I, I had, uh, you know, gone to my usual morning routine, went downstairs, filled the dry food, went downstairs, filled the water, was on my way back upstairs, and they stopped me dead in my tracks and wouldn't let me go back upstairs to put the water in spite of dry food, in spite of bowls, and litter, and more bowls, and cans, and more cans, and pouches, and more cans. Basically, the reason why that didn't show, I'll show you how Hudson PD depicted it. They pretty much closed it from one side and like angled it like that. So, you know, or just left it closed entirely and said, oh, geez, I don't see any food here. I don't see any food here. True, I'm dusty. I still have hay. I still have guinea pigs. I still have clutter. But I have food. That was false. Well, I don't just have one pet drawer full of toys. No, I have two pet drawers full of toys. I do admit, I made my own scratching post for them. Because I wasn't finding anything in the store that was quite big enough for the amount of cats I had. And it was in pretty rough shape then.
but as you can see, it's all been redone. The rug was re redone. I had to repair the door that the police broke off. There is still a scratch on the door, as you can see, where the door was completely ripped off. The top was ripped off. I had to repair that, put a new rug on it. It's five floors. You can go in and out. And I can't wait to get them home so they can try out the new rug. This is one thing I do regret uh, not doing sooner. It was in rough shape, and uh, but as you can see, the improvements have been made. It's back on the wall, secure. It's their favorite tree from when I made them. Friday afternoon, a dog officer comes by out of the blue. Comes over at five o'clock in the afternoon. And I had to wait till five. My friend lives in Revere. It's really tough to drive that far in, you know, five o'clock rush hour traffic. So, you know, I'm like about to step in the shower. It's five o'clock. I'm getting ready to go because, you know, nothing really clears up until six or seven. And uh, there's a dog officer. There's two dog officers at my door, apparently. After, De you know, they said, just give Denise's cat back. There they are. And they're demanding to get in the room. I said, I'm, I'm on my way out the door. I'm on my way in the shower. The room's a mess. I said, you know, can you come back tomorrow? I said, any time but now. And they said, uh, we want to see the guinea pigs, make sure they're healthy. I, I hand them a guinea pig. He picks him up. He picks him up and he squeezes him like, you know, like really hard and I'm really stressed and like, why are you picking up this female like this? And she's, she could be pregnant, I said. I said, well, it's one of my last three. Pregnant, you know. He, I mean, they overreact to everything from the moment they come through the door. And I'm like, I probably should have taken that as a sign. I was just in a hurry. I just, uh, you know, I didn't imagine that this woman that hadn't been there in six years would suddenly take Denise's word for it, this person that I only knew I, I met twice and had followed me home. I hadn't gotten any police response other than give her a cat back. They did, didn't take my report of her coming to my house and stalking me seriously. So, um, yeah. I, I, I just couldn't believe that this this ACO, this dog officer that I hadn't had contact with in six years, I had had a pretty traumatic experience losing my ducks and my chickens before, too, in 2013. And I just couldn't imagine that, you know, she would come back to harass me, of all people. You know, she had just given a cat back to a a person who was homeless, um, that didn't have a home still for her cat. And uh, I just, uh, I don't know, you know, I had, I, had, I had a home for them for 10 years. I don't understand. Right now, I have probably eight cages set up in my bedroom. I have um, two cages all set to go in my basement. I have a crate that's all set to go for the chickens when they arrive. Um, I have uh, four in the spare room, and I have um, some other cage tops that are still being cleaned in the hall. So I have cages. Uh, it was never a matter of supplies. Um, when the police came, they took an additional 10 cages with them. Um, they took over over $500 in cages, actually. Those cages aren't cheap. Um, they run smaller ones that they took, run an average of $30. Um, the larger ones they took um, run up to about $70. So, yeah, all in all, all, you know, once it's all added up, yeah, there was about $500 in cages there. Of course, that's not including the hideaways, which are about um, 8 to 15 The big hideaways are about $15. Um, 
The small hideaways are about eight dollars, and the medium ones are about twelve dollars. So, ten cages, ten hideaways. You know, do the math. That's at least eighty to one hundred and fifty dollars there. And then, of course, there's the rabbit hut. Um, I never won anything in my life. Um, and a couple of years ago at the Topsfield Fair, I was volunteering all week. And I had the opportunity to put in my raffle tickets every single day. Um, you know, I had a strategy that year. I really wanted to win this hut. And I had um, entered this contest for years. Every year they have it. There's two hutches. There's a big one, a double one, and a single one. And, uh, you know, you buy a raffle, t excuse me, raffle ticket like anybody else. And, you know, five bucks for ten chances or whatever. And you put it in this box. And they empty it every day. And at the end of the week, they pull out all the drawings and they have a drawing. Well, I had the strat. Excuse me, now I get the hiccups. Um, I had the strategy that I was going to buy raffle tickets every day that I volunteered and put them in. So that way I would have like a layering approach, you know, in different piles of these tickets, like I would be in the different parts of the layer of the bird. So when they reach it and grab one, they're more likely to grab one of mine. That was my, you know, I'm a strategy person. I play slots, you know, I, I, I'm a strategy person. So... When it came to this rabbit hutch, I was no different. I was on a mission that year. I wanted to win this thing, and I wanted to win it bad. And I spent I spent my hard earned my money, you know, on this on these raffle tickets. I I did it honestly, and I I had this layering, you know. The first day of the fair, I was there, you know, with my raffle tickets. Second day of the fair, I was there with my raffle tickets. Third day of the fair, fourth day of the fair, fifth day of the fair. So if anyone's name was going to be called that year, it was going to be mine, <laughs> you know, and I know, and, and they knew, the people that volunteered the fair knew that, like, I had a better chance of winning this raffle because I I was totally about the strategy that year, you know, and I, I'm unapologetic. I had a strategy. That's how I won it. And I, I finally won the rabbit hut. <laughs> I was, like, so excited, you know. And um, I looked, I even looked in our condo bylaws, um, you know, because they, they're kind of weird about, and, and they, you know, they're weird about certain things, flower pots, whatever. And so I looked it up in the bylaws and it said, you cannot have any, any living animal. You cannot have, um, like if you have a flower pot or a wooden raised bed, it has to be stained the same color as the porches so there were certain rules about like wooden flower boxes and all it said in the bylaws was um you cannot have living animals housed outside in a cage in your yard it said nothing about a rabbit hutch by itself with no animals in it so and i won this thing and i said well i'll just store it outside in the backyard so i put it there like any other flower pot and it stayed there for, let's see, when was that? I think that was 2015. So it stayed there for four years without incident until a certain neighbor moved in. And this certain neighbor, well, I have my suspicions about their corner of the street drug dealing business because they seem to want to be on every corner and peep around every corner. And it looks like my rabbit hutch was in the way of their drug runner business or whatever they were doing. So all of a sudden, when this new neighbor moved in, they decided they were going to go on this rabbit hutch vendetta and also encourage my parents with dementia to go in the rabbit hutch vendetta. Now, mind you, the rabbit hutch has not bothered my parents for four years until this certain member on the board and this certain board meeting decides to reinvent the bylaws in, in the world according to this rabbit hutch hatred that accomplishes this, this drug dealing in the neighborhood aim, this lookout business it enables.